What's up, Core Reporters? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another recap of Gypsy Rose's Life After a Lockup show. Da, 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 da. I really want to know how you guys felt about episode five because it really felt as though Gypsy was laying down the groundwork for leaving Ryan to go back together with her ex, Ken, because she was picking, picking, picking. Was Ryan difficult? Yes, absolutely. But was Gypsy also looking to find an out after the way her mom blew up her spot and brought Ken back into the picture? Absolutely as well. As usual, guys, I watch Love After Lo Life After Lockup using Philo, and I've got an affiliate link in the description box of this video if you too would like to watch the show online for free. They will give you a free trial for seven days, so definitely do make sure to go ahead and sign up. Binge watch the show, binge watch her documentary, binge watch a bunch of other reality shows, okay? So like I mentioned, you guys, her stepmom, and I'm going to call her mom for brevity here because Gypsy refers to her as her mom, um, and it's a lot quicker than stepmom. So Christy had been meddling in Gypsy's marriage to Ryan by telling Gypsy that her ex, Ken, reached out and wanted to know how she was doing and that he regrets leaving her, right? And then we saw how that impacted Ryan and Gypsy. Like, they just, they seemed like they really were no longer, like, you know, all that connected the way that they were before. It feels like that was all Gypsy needed to kind of go, you know what? Yeah, Ryan is not for me. I really want to get back together with Ken. But at this point, Ryan is scrambling. And guess what happens? He and Gypsy end up going and getting a dog. I feel like he just did it in order to keep Gypsy with him after all the drama. And um, that makes me feel sad because like this is someone that really, really wanted to be with her. Is he difficult? Absolutely. But the way that she just, you know, turned like that, like ice, um, is very, very difficult to, to go through as well. So I definitely do empathize with him. And you know who else empathizes with him? None other than Gypsy's father. He actually confronts her mother about the entire ordeal. He's like, listen, Christy, you should not be meddling in Gypsy's marriage. This is not cool. I don't know why you keep on talking to Ken. Like, it's over. He left Gypsy, and he's just trying to worm his way back into her life now. And Christy says, you know what? Ken has a right to share his side of the breakup. That's true. No one is denying that. But the thing is, what does that have to do with you? Like he could share his side to whoever he wants to, but it has nothing to do with you. Like he shouldn't be going to you. You should have then be going to Gypsy with this. Like he can talk to his own family and friends at the end of the day. Um, and it's just so clear that she and her daughter do not like Ryan. And I think that that's like a big reason why she's doing this. Because if it were reverse and Gypsy was married to Ken and Ryan was coming around, I don't think she would be passing these messages along, right? Now, um, her dad says that Gypsy and Ryan's relationship is fresh and very delicate because it is new. She just got out of prison and he like asks her not to mess it up. And then this is where Christy said something that is so telling. She says, you know what? And even if it does, and I'll be here, we'll be here to pick up the pieces. So basically she's saying, yeah, I'm going to F that, that S up, but I'll be there to pick up the pieces. So don't even worry about it, which is like, Girl, worry about your own man. Worry about your own husband. Like, this is diabolical. It's it's too much. It really, really is. But listen, it's making for good TV, right? At the expense of people, unfortunately, but it's making for good TV. So you can tell that Ryan really, really feels that something has changed in Gypsy ever since Crystal. Um, Chris, is it Crystal or is it Crystal? Christy. Ever since Christy brought up the Ken situation, because now here's Gypsy texting, you know, per usual as Ryan is driving. Sometimes we'll glance a little bit, but like nothing major, you know, just like, you know, looking around, I'm bored of looking at the road. But this time in this episode, he was just so fixated on her phone. He could not take his eyes off it. He was asking her who she was texting. He asked her that not just once. I think it was like two or three times or something like that. It was a lot. Like it was overwhelming. And, um, you know, I felt bad for Gypsy in that because you're stuck in this car and here's this guy leering over you to read your messages and asking you, you know, about who you're texting, what you're texting about and stuff. It's like, mm, I don't love that. And then he just gets to the point and asks her, which I do think was a rather brave question to ask, because I feel like a lot of times, like, you know, if you're in Ryan's situation, you would be a little bit scared to ask because you don't, you're not ready to hear the answer if the person is willing to be honest with you, right? So basically he asks Gypsy if like there's any part of her that feels like reaching out to Ken or being in communication with Ken ever since Christie's meddling. 
Gypsy claims that there isn't, but that is just so obviously not true. You know, and we're going to see more evidence of that not being true as she speaks to her sister a little bit later on in the episode. But before we can get there, we have to go back to her father and mother's like backyard where her dad really like puts his foot down with Christy. He says, Christy, seriously, you've got to stop meddling here because if Gypsy and Ken break up and divorce, it is going to be your fault. And I don't want that to be on you. So please stop leaving the door open for Ken. And I thought it was really wonderful what he said, but Christy does not care y'all because here she comes right in her confessional to us saying basically that she's not going to back off and that she thinks that Gypsy is still low key in love with Ken. And listen, she's right. But at the same time, she's messy. She should not be doing all of this. Like surely she's got some hobbies to keep her occupied, you know, something a little bit more interesting than trying to meddle in like her, her daughter's marriage right? Anyway, speaking of her daughter, her daughter, well, we'll say her daughters in this case, because Gypsy and her sister were off to get some pedicures together. So her sister picks her up from a halfway point with Ryan at some sort of a gas station, and then she drives her to the nail salon. And as they're talking and everything like that, well, before she even gets with him, Ken's like, oh, I wish I could join you guys. And that's obviously because he's feeling anxious about the, uh, sorry, Ryan is like, I wish that I could join you guys for like your day. He's like, she's like, listen, we're getting like pedicures and stuff like that's You're not going to be interested. He's like, yeah, I know, but I wish I could come. And again, it makes me feel sad because he's insecure because like, obviously something is going on with Gypsy and the stepmom. They've, they've decided to keep Ken out there because I feel like if Gypsy told the stepmom to back off, she would, but Gypsy's not going to because she obviously wants to leave Ryan for Ken and uh, Ryan can obviously sense that, right? Um, and then as he's dropping Gypsy off to the sister, he's like, oh, don't like, you know, don't let her talk crap about me. Like, oh my God, the insecurities are jumping out. You can tell that this was just never really a stable, secure relationship on both ends. So anyway, her sister picks her up and then she, they start driving to the nail salon and she talks about pl like planning to take her nursing exam, all the studying that's going into that and everything. And meanwhile, Gypsy talks about scheduling a nose job, which Alyssa said, I can't hate. I can't hate. Listen, it's life changing. And so uh, when it comes to her, she explains like her reasoning for wanting it or like some of her reasoning, which is how mean people were to her on the Internet. People have she's like quoted something that someone said. And she's like, I watched this guy call me a BD, a big nose, beady eyed ninja turtle. Oh, wow. Like that is really a crazy thing to say about someone like that's that's a lot. That's a little too creative. That's a little bit too harsh, you know? So I really feel bad that she had to witness that. Um, the internet is a crazy, crazy place, you guys. Um, I didn't get comments like that, by the way. People have always been very nice to me on the internet. I feel very lucky, but I just wanted to for my own reasons. So um, they arrive at the salon and at the salon, Gypsy lets it be known that this is her first time like getting a pedicure. This is her first time in a massage chair. And it's all so crazy, right? Because these are things that like, we do like this is just what you do right so it's just it's crazy to think that someone at this age is just doing this stuff for the first time like you know like she's missed out on so 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 much so it's really cool to get her to to get to see her witness all of these things for the first time and it must be amazing for her to have a sister to help guide her through these things and to be there for her and with her through these new experiences right and so let's talk about gypsy being so naive and underexposed because she told her sister that she was expecting she's like you don't know a person until you live with them because i didn't know ryan snored i made that exact face to my tv like girl you really didn't think that your man as large as he is you know and i don't mean this in a bad way but like just as large as he is it's just an adjective just like if someone could be skinny um as large as he is you never looked at this man and assumed he snored like, you know, this just goes to show that this woman really has not been exposed. Like, she doesn't know much about, like, science, health, anything. Because, obviously, he snores, right? Um, 
so anyway, I just, honestly, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just shocked. I, I really, really am. So um, she complains about all the clutter in the closet of the house as well and stuff like that. Remember in last week's episode, we watched her like clean out the house. She cleaned out the closet. She cleaned out the fridge as well. The fridge had a bunch of like old food that Ryan refused to part with. Like it's a lot. And then she also tells her sister about her mom bringing up Ken. And her sister was like, now why would she do that? I know she did it, but I just don't understand why she would do that. And I'm like, see, everybody around you, Gypsy, knows that this is, like, unreasonable what your mom is doing. But, like, Gypsy's so happy. She's so giddy. And, again, this goes to, like, the lack of maturity and, like, the developmental milestones that she missed out on and everything like that. And it's just, it's crazy because, like, she just doesn't see it. And, uh, it, like, it was, you know, so at this point, Gypsy just starts giggling about Ken. She's like, <laughs> you know, he said he regrets leaving me, girl. Like, and on this hand, she's got her ring finger. She's like, he regrets leaving me. Girl, like you are wearing a ring finger that is a hand-me-down heirloom from your husband's mother, you know, like stop. This is just such a terrible look. Now on the drive home from the salon, we find out what we already knew, which is that Ken's D is not actually fire because Gypsy tells her sister that she's never actually had the big O from Ken. And uh, <laughs> the poor thing, like, girl, it's, it's not fire if you're, if you're not if you're not getting it, you know, getting it, girl. So then she also tells her sister that she may be pregnant because Ken keeps on shooting up her club. And it's just wild to me that Gypsy is the older sister between the two of them because it's like a fully grown or like a young adult because her sister, like she's still, she's still young, right? So she seems young because she is. Like, it's like she, like the rules were reversed. She's taking on like her teenage sister who happens to be married. And it's just such an odd dynamic. It really, really is quite like jarring to, to, to watch and to witness. And at this point, after they're talking about like the shooting up of the club and whatnot, the sister who's studying to be a nurse, right? She's like, Gypsy, you got to get some morning after pill girl, because you might fall pregnant. And apparently like the last time he shot up that club was just like two days ago or something like that. So for whatever reason, Gypsy decides to call Ken to talk about it. And she's just so sheepish and weird. It's like a child calling her dad to break the news that she did something bad. And the teachers are about to call into the house because she's going to get a detention or she's going to get a suspension or something like that. You know what I mean? Like very weird. So she tells Ryan about the plan B and he's like, no, that's not going to do anything for you. Like, and then he has like this weird pause of silence and everything like that. And then, then the nurse sister's like, nope, nope, nope. Don't you worry. It's effective for up to 72 hours. So there still is time for Gypsy to take the pill and to like, you know, not fall pregnant. And then at this point, Ryan's like, all right, whatever, do what you want to do. And you can tell he was disappointed. This man, he mentioned earlier wanting to have a family with Gypsy and everything like that. And uh, I think that to him, he's kind of like, I'm disappointed that this is something I'm learning about on the phone versus like in person. And then it's all being filmed. You're with your sister who I feel hates me. It is a very uncomfortable position for him to be in. So I wasn't surprised when he, you know, turned out to be really upset about this, which we will get to a little bit later. But I just want to mention that Gypsy said that she paid $40 for that morning after pill. Y'all, you know how much that costs in like Paris or in France? And um, I think other European countries are different, but it's still rather inexpensive. I think it costs somewhere between five and 10 euros. So if you're on vacation and you're able to, you're in a state that allows you to make sure you take one or two back with you instead of paying that much for it. Like, bam, that is so expensive. It, it, it would make a great souvenir. <laughs> now, um, Gypsy, by the way, she's like, you know, like I'm, I'm mentally ready. I'm emotionally ready to have a child. Girl, you are a child. You are a child. You are not ready to have a child. You are a child. I don't think that either of them are ready in any way. Ryan, by the way, when Gypsy comes back to the house, again, he's very, very much upset about everything. And he's like, you know, like, Gypsy, why would you talk about that on TV? Like, instead of like, you know, us one on one, like this is going to be shown to the world. And he's acting like he doesn't want their ex life out there. Meanwhile, a couple episodes, he was so happy that Gypsy was out there talking about how his D is fire on TikTok, right? And then he kept on repeating it on that episode too. So when she's out here lying about your D being fire, it's okay. But when she's talking about contraception, it's not okay. All of a sudden, we're not talking about our ex-life. Huh? Isn't that interesting? I think it's because he wanted to like, you know, 
prevent her from being able to take the plan B in private without having a sister there to help her. That's what I feel like it was, but maybe you guys have a different opinion. So please do make sure to let me know in the comment section. Okay. You guys, what you think really had him upset. Now, Gypsy at this point, she's upset that her husband's upset. So what does she do? She plays the mom card. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she compared him to her mom again last week's episode. And this time she's like, I'm feeling like right now, it right now is the same way my mom made me feel, you know, what I'm feeling right now. And so basically what she means is that when her mom was out here trying to convince everyone she was super duper sick and everything, she would not allow Gypsy to talk about anything health related with her father or other family members to, who, you know, who might be, grow suspicious or sound the alarm on the, all the stuff that like was being done to Gypsy and everything like that. And I just also, by the way, you guys, I want to acknowledge a lot of you guys are saying that on the show, Gypsy lies about some of the things that her mom had her go through as a child, like operations, this, that, and the other. Don't worry, I will be going on a deep dive into that stuff as well. I'm just re reporting what is being spoken about on the show for now, okay, you guys? So just an FYI on that. And I am looking forward to going down the rat hole on that entire situation. And at this point, Ryan, he's upset that he has upset Gypsy to this level. He's like, no, I don't want you to like, you know, compare me to your mom. I'm still here because I still love you. Like, I am not going to, I am not going to like do all that. And again, I'm like, Gypsy, why did you even call him and tell him about this? Like, you're a grown ass woman. Take your pill and keep it moving. Uh, you know, like, what was this about? And then after that fight, Gypsy in her confessional, she says that she's rather worried that Ryan is going to keep trying to limit her ability to confide in people. And she says that she's leaving if she starts to feel controlled. And honestly, it just sounds like she wants to get back with Ken now that her mom has put the thought in her head. And so she's going to blow up every dispute with Ryan to be this huge, like irredeemable thing um, versus what, what it is, right? Like she's checked out. She's claiming she wants to work on this marriage, but her actions and her behavior and stuff, especially when it comes to giggling about Ken are stating otherwise. So, hmm, I guess we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Although we already know some of it from social media and everything like that, right? Obviously Gypsy and Ken currently are together. They've got matching tattoos and everything like that. But I want to see the scenes of this dynamic because I do not trust Ken. Speaking of Ken, here he is. He gets all mic'd up to tell his side of the story when it comes to his romance with Gypsy Rose. And, you know, I'm going to read this thing to you and you tell me whether you feel as though Ken reached out to Lifetime and producers and the press to share his side or if that's something that they just reached out or whatever. Here's the quote. Producers learned Ken wanted to share his side of the story on camera. He has never spoken to the media about his relationship with Gypsy before. To me, when I saw him get mic'd up and then I saw this come, I said, Ken, not you reaching out to the producers, Mr. I'm so shy. I want to be out of the public eye. I have to break up with Gypsy in order to remain private. Like, it's looking sus, especially when he's like, yeah, like, Gypsy blew up bigger than I ever expected her to. Like, you know, this is so much fame and everything like that. I was like, huh, it is, isn't it? It'd be a shame if someone came running back for that fame, right? Because maybe before, like before it was such a big thing with like the documentary, the morning, daytime, like interviews, the reality show, the book, all that stuff, all those social media followers. Maybe he thought it was just like this small story that would ruin his reputation. But now seeing how big Gypsy Rose is and this entire ordeal, he wants to actually like hitch his star to that wagon and get out of bartending and become an influencer or something. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised you guys like, I'm not trusting Ken at all. It's just not making sense why he would reach out. Because if you're so private and everything like that, wouldn't you just like release a statement at the very most, you know, silence typically, but then you release a statement like in written, you don't come and sit down and everything like that. And then you introduce us to your house, to your dog. Speaking of that dog, he claims that he and Gypsy always wanted to get a Husky together and name him Bolto or something like that. And he got a dog and it kind of looks like a husky, though it is not. And he named it Parker instead. Hmm. I don't know. Ken, I've got my eye on you. I'm not trusting you. I'm really not. And I don't like the way you got introduced to the show. But I am happy that you're introduced to the show because it's going to be interesting to watch Gypsy and Ryan's dynamic and compare it to your dynamic with her now that you're here for the show. Huh?
keep an eye out, you guys, okay? I will be continuing to recap this show as it goes. I really enjoy it, and I enjoy speaking with you guys in the comment section as well. So please do make uh, sure to let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section down below. And as usual, we're going to chat about it. Don't forget, once again, I do have an affiliate link in the description box of this video. If you too would like to watch it and you haven't been able to, you can for free by signing up for Philo. I've got an affiliate link in the description box so that you can sign up for a free trial. It's a seven day free trial. So get to binging. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.